KG, aka Kelvin here. And my first, very first video where I'm trying to start doing tutorials. And the first thing I want to talk about is these business cards I just got. So I started designing my own business cards and I want to show you guys how I designed these and some of the things I did to make these. So here they are. Here's the front all my contact information and logo and just something about me and here's the back just kind of like a high-res view of the logo and of the um, just kind of my little photo thing there and if you look closely it's like a bunch of code going across the back and uh, everything uh, kind of matches my colors color scheme and I just really love these like I was super excited to get these in the mail uh, and so without further ado I want to just jump to my computer and show you a little bit how I designed it. Started is opening in a program called GIMP. So what GIMP is, is a free uh, Photoshop-like program that you can do uh, Photoshop-like uh, operations in. So you can edit images and it's free. That's the big piece is that it's free. Uh, has the same features as Photoshop, not as clean and not as easy to use as Photoshop, but has the same features and doesn't cost you a bunch of money like Photoshop does. I want to open up my design as a reference so I can use that to design with down to about this size. So I have it over here as a reference. So the first thing you want to do is make sure you have your size right. So when you get these cards printed the bigger the size of your image uh, the more high quality it will be for the most part I mean, usually once you get past a certain size the quality starts to not change but you at least need to have it at a, a decent size to start with I have to make a new image first new you can create the size you can set the size here and usually for the business card you want at least like twice the width of the height so I'm gonna go I'm gonna usually I would say like have your height at thousand at least, but that kind of makes my computer go slow and makes it just take longer to do this. And for the sake of this tutorial, I'm gonna do 500 by a thousand. Um, but usually you'd probably want to do like maybe like a thousand height. I don't know. I mean maybe 500 by a thousand could be okay, but um, just make sure your quality is good. First thing I did was set the background this whole thing. So for that, you can hit new layer. Oh, you want to set the color first. And my color already had it set, which you can put in hex values here and change the color here using the screen. Set it to the foreground. So then when I make a new layer, I can say use the foreground. Delete that layer. So here's your background. So the other part here is had another little black part here. You can use the selection tool to select half of the screen. Might want to make a new layer for this and make it transparent to start. Make a new section of the screen and then use a new layer and then highlight half the screen and then you can do this thing called fill with foreground or background color change the foreground color to the color you want which I think uh, I might not have the color in there I think it might be like 3535 yeah now I can say fill with background foreground Bam. So now starting to look really close. You can go to select none to get rid of selection. But now it's starting to look really close to to the background at least on, on that. So if you look close, I have like a little code in the background. And how I did that was getting on the internet and finding just the image to use. That is an image of code, and I just did a little trick with it to make it um kind of be like transparent and like that so let me find like source code just google source I say this oh this is transparent even better so download this 
you can use almost any image though. So what you want to do is take that image and drag it into. You can just drag it right on top. Ping offset. Sure. So now you got this code here. I'm gonna put it above all the rest of it. It's ain't the same thing I used, but it's close enough. And so you want? I need to make it bigger. You can use this scale tool. Lock the. You want to lock the uh, the ratio so it doesn't like get all warped and look crazy. But I want I want to make this the size of my. It's probably a little bigger than than what I set as my uh, height and width, so that it can cover the whole thing. You want to use the move tool to. Oops, I moved the wrong thing. You can also undo. Sometimes you have to turn other layers off to be able to just select that layer even then I'm not getting it there it is all right I'm gonna set it like somewhere in the middle where it looks decent the next thing you want to do is this thing so if your image doesn't have a background it's even better if you find one that's transparent just black text on on transparent background what you can do is go to layer uh, alpha to selection so now you got alpha to selection you see my code is white so what we want to do is now that we have the text selected here we want to create a new layer that's white and put it under that one turn this one off while we still got the text selected we want to flip our selection by using invert and then we want to cut all the inverted part so now we just got white text so it's actually pretty cool to be able to do that. And you can delete the original image you added on now because you made a new layer. You can delete that, bring this back. Uh, do a none. Now you got code. It doesn't look like mine. I used a different image, but close enough. You can take this. You can To get it to look like mine, you can bring the opacity down to where mine was. Maybe like 25%, I think, where I had mine. Probably lower. Kind of where you can barely see it. Kind of like that. And there you go. You got kind of like this hint of code in the background. Not saying you'd want to do code, but you could do whatever you wanted. Some sort of cool um, background type of deal. Just kind of uh, whatever you want. So the next thing, let's see, was the logo. A lot of the stuff I had, you're going to have your logo pre-made and potentially like your profile photo. I kind of made it like a profile bubble. File image, pull that in. Keep. Usually you don't want to do that. It ain't that big. Sorry about that. <laughs> a little big. Size. All right. Scale that down. And just turn off everything else so I can see what that is. Move it a little more towards the top corner. So how you can do this is choose the circle selection tool. You want to select right up in the top corner and go all the way to the other corner. Hold the shift key to make sure it's a perfect circle. And just fill it up like that. And then you want to do the invert selection again and you want to cut out the extra circle part so now and then none now you have a circular uh, profile image so next to add a little white space around it what I what I do is I would use uh, alpha to selection like we did before to select everything that isn't transparent that's what that does um, so let's see Alpha to selection. So now you selected it. Also, would make the layer full size. So you can do layer to image size. So now the layer is taking up the whole image size. And next, when you have it selected, you can do this thing called grow. I'd say grow by five, maybe ten. No, ten is too big, so five grow by five 
then what you can do is create a new layer make it white and now you have your selection here you just want to invert it and cut again oh I think I already have it inverted so oh no I don't invert it cut I'm gonna switch the layer with the layer behind it and boom you got the profile image that kind of looks pretty cool because it looks like a little social media type of deal and there you go you got that I kind of cut it short on one side but if you take your time with it you can get a little better once you, when you made the circle to cut it out but this is close enough next thing is pretty simple I just pulled my logo in which is probably huge yeah I pulled the logo in stuff like this you just kind of just pulling stuff in and changing the scaling it down which I already kind of showed you how to do X so there's text elements you can add in GIMP using this tool or this I guess control here it's coming here you can also download new fonts to your PC if you want to have different fonts than the one uh, that uh, GIMP provides but they have a lot in here to provide I installed one from the web called Telium. T Telium, all different kind of flavors of it. Um, and so this part is pretty simple. You're just kind of typing in text based on the font you use. I'd say for these business cards, you want to try to use a nice looking font. Like you want to try it out on the internet or some sort of some sort of preview to see what it looks like. Because the font can really change the mood and the professional. Um, not that these look really professional, but just the high the quality it can change the, the font can change the quality overall feel of the business card. So you want to make sure that the font you choose is good quality. So I choose this font called Telium. And this piece is pretty simple. You're just kind of going in here, typing in different um, different pieces of the business logo you can type what you want just make sure some of it's big some of it's small you know people are gonna be looking pretty close at it just don't make sure the text is not too small Kelvin credit and increase the font to 50 and this looks like looks like this is wrong Sorry, I'm a little thick. This must have been light. Cool. And over here, I kind of did the same thing, except I just changed the color to white, the text color to white. Helium font a little bit darker on this part. And this is just pretty straightforward here. Just kind of typing in uh, what you want on your business card as far as um, text. So the next piece of this, after you get that done, is these icons over here. So I already got an icon added to my computer. I'm just gonna drop it over here. It's in a new layer. I'm gonna pull up the layer so it's at the top. Basically, what you can do with these black icons, you want to find one that's transparent. What you can do is go to color, colorize, and you basically can use this to kind of change the overall kind of color. Um, it's only so much you can really do, but. You can basically change it from black to white pretty easily using that tool. So once you change that from black to white, I just made this smaller. Let's kind of keep the keep the size there. Change that to about that. Moved it over here. 
And then I just went on the internet and got all these other different logos. I used a website called iconfinder.com. You can go on Icon Finder, you could say, I want a Facebook logo. And go hit this free tab here. And then you can download one of these Facebook logos. It's good to choose if you're going to do something that's white or plain black. It's good to choose one that's white or black. And then use the colorize option um, to turn it white. And you basically just do do it the same way that I just did that other one. Take take this, download the ping. Um, on Mac, you might need to pull it to the desktop first. Move this out of the way. Pull it in this way. And then use the same way you want to use the colorize option. Make it white. You want to use the scaler here to scale it down. Scale. And then you just need to move it to where you want it. So like if I had my Facebook thing here, I could drop down a line and just say this is slash KG codes on Facebook. Um, and there you have it. And that's basically it. The rest of it is just uh, filling in text, but that's basically the style. What you want to do in GIMP, you can go to, you can save this, you can go to export. Uh, little errors here, but you can go to export, give it a name, save it in ping format, definitely. Export it. Pretty much follow the steps I did there. Open it up, and you got. Your business logo. You can take this to Vista Print, upload it right into Vista Print. Make sure you leave some space around the edges because Vista Print will kind of cut a little bit in its framing. It'll cut a little bit around the sides. That's why I got this extra piece over here. Um, but other than that, this is high quality and it's good enough for Vista Print to make some business cards. And uh, you see, I got these. Uh, these are the cards I got right here. Good quality from Vista Print. So, you know, this is my first video, so bear with me on the on the format and I guess the quality, but uh, I'm starting to do more videos like this, tutorials, sharing my knowledge of things that I do. Uh, let me know if there's any questions you have in the comments or uh, shoot me a message. I want to really connect with other YouTubers and users, uh, maybe to do some collaboration. So let me know what your channel is. So I can check it out, follow and subscribe if you... Uh, want to see more programming content and design content and just digital creating creation content uh, hit the bell so you get every uh, video I make uh, as a notification and uh, other than that just connect with me I love to connect with people and uh, see what you guys are up to too all right see you in like the next this video if you find it useful let me know in the comments what you think about it uh, if you want more tutorials or just want to know um, more about me and follow what I do in the future just uh, subscribe and do all that stuff I don't yeah you know whatever whatever you do on YouTube you know